Hey everybody, I'm Dana Kababic, founder of Carving Junkies, and I'd like to welcome you to the International Association of Wood Carvers meeting. All right, guys, good afternoon and welcome to the International Association of Wood Carvers. Today is Saturday, May the 14th, 2022, and uh, you've joined the International Wood Carvers Association. <laughs> Or, I'm sorry, International Association of Wood Carvers uh, Saturday afternoon meeting. Um, today on our meeting, we have uh, Dana Kababic with us from Carving Junkies. Uh, she's going to be coming on a few minutes and uh, talking to us a little bit about uh, what she does to um, advertise and uh, motivate carvers. Um, she's going to be talking a little bit about creating websites, uh, writing and producing newsletters, growing social media presence. All those things that we as wood carvers want to do outside of just carving to get our information out there. Uh, so she's going to be coming on with us here in just a few minutes to talk about that. Uh, there's a few things I want to talk about before we get started. I uh, just want to remind you about the Wood Carving Academy. If you're interested in any of the classes that have taken place recently uh, or past classes that you know about, uh, go out and check out Wood Carving Academy. You can go out and do subscriptions there uh, one month, three month, or a year. Uh, Yaron contacted me this morning and said that he just updated some of the recent workshops. So those are out on the website now. So uh, if you haven't checked that recently, make sure you go out there and check that out and see what's available. Uh, I, I subscribe to that. It's a good place to go out and get information and uh, take some of these classes. So make sure you go out and check that out. Uh, I also heard from Kevin Applegate this morning, and I think Kevin's on the meeting. Uh, he contacted me and said that uh, there's some openings for the Converse CCA seminar that's coming up in August. Uh, they're still doing that in Converse, Indiana, um, and the instructors there are going to be Ryan Olson, Bruce Hinn, and Dwayne Gosnell. Again, it's August 19th, 20th, and 21st. If you're interested in that, uh, reach out to Kevin. I'll be putting his information over in the chat here in a few minutes. Uh, they do have a few openings there available, so uh, he's trying to get those filled. So if you're interested in, in the Converse, Indiana area uh, in August, or if you can go out there uh, reach out to Kevin, get a hold of him, try to get signed up for that and get in those classes. Those are going to be some great classes coming up. I uh, just want to remind everybody about the Carving the Rockies uh, show that's coming up with the CCA in September. Again, that's the 24th and 25th. Uh, I'll be out there broadcasting live with the International Association of Woodcarvers. So uh, make sure you try to make it out to that. Uh, it's going to be the first annual CCA uh, Carving the Rockies show. And it's going to be strictly um, around caricature carving. So again, if you're interested in caricature carving and that's your thing, this is the show to go to. And again, this is the first annual. Uh, so this will be ongoing. We'll see how this one goes, but uh, looks like it's a great, going to be a great show. They've got classes lined up. They've got a social event. Uh, they've got the competition that's going on. There's a lot of stuff that they're going to be doing. So make sure to try to make it out to that if you get a chance. Uh, next week on our meetings, uh, we're going to have Dylan Goodson that's going to be coming on. Uh, if you all know Dylan, he does relief carving. And he's going to come on and do a demonstration for us. Uh, he's going to be talking about pattern making also and using modern technology to create patterns. Uh, so it should be a good meeting with Dylan. Again, uh, Dylan comes down to Charlotte some. I've talked to him on several occasions. He's a great carver, so you need to go out and check out his work. Uh, and he'll be joining us live next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, having said all of that, um, again, we have Dana Kababic on today. She's coming to us with the Carbon Junkies. Uh, she's going to be talking to us a lot about uh, the things that she's created to uh, promote wood carving. Uh, so at this time, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Dana. We look forward to uh, hearing from you, Dana, and hearing what you have to offer. Thank you. Thanks, Blake. Um, I just want to start by saying it's, it's an honor to be here today. And there's so many carvers on here that I admire. So um, I thought I would start by talking a little bit about my carving and designing journey. And then I'm going to transition into website building and promoting carvings on social media, give you some tips and things to think about. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm a Jersey girl, born and raised in Jersey. For those that need to know, it's exit 26 on Route 78. Um, if anyone's here on the Wood Carving Illustrated Forum, I am Jersey girl on that uh, forum. I'm an advertising copyright, copywriter. I've been doing that professionally for about uh, 25 years. When I started my career, um, I had the fortune of working with United Feature Syndicate and cartoonists, uh, Jim Davis, who does Garfield, and Charles Schultz, who does Peanuts. And that was a great introduction for me to art and publishing and videos. And, you know, it was back in the day 
when there was no internet. So if you made a typo, it lasted forever. Um, about 20 years ago, I transitioned into medical advertising. So I spend a lot of time um, doing like information booklets and information for patients, step-by-step um, -step things that you do in the bathroom, which I won't mention. And that is good training ground for my tutorials. It's taking complex information and trying to distill it down. Um, I've developed content probably for about 15 to 20 websites over the years. Three of them have been my own. And I will share with you today what has worked for me, what has not worked for me, and we'll go forward from there. So um, in, in 2020, wood carving was not on my bingo card at all. I actually had been researching starting a crochet website. You know, I'm probably gonna retire in a couple of years and I wanted to do something fun. You know, medical writing is great, but it's, it's serious stuff. And then COVID hit and I just couldn't crochet. So my husband and I, uh, to get out of the house, we started backpacking up in Harriman, New York. And we started getting into bushcraft, you know, and I found Bertram on YouTube, but he does these beautiful videos. And I'd be like, oh, look at that. Bertram's making a table and he's making a cooksa, you know. So my husband got me a Mora Garberg and I started processing wood. And there was something about the slicing of the wood that I really liked. So I got myself a, a spoon carving knife, a couple of Moras, and hopefully you guys can see this. This was my, it's, it's really more like a coffee scoop. I call it a cooksa, but it's a coffee scoop. It's from Black Walnut, which I will never, ever carve again. Um, it was a horrible thing to carve, but I was persistent and I stayed with it and I liked it. So I kind of figured, you know what? I, I better learn how to do some carving cuts. So I watched Sharon, uh, my art on YouTube and I learned the basic cuts. And then she does a series on carving little people, which actually is Jack Price's method for carving small characters in wood. And so I carved Marvin, he was my first character and something got ignited in me and I just, I wanted to do more. So I'm not really a huge video person. I think I have ADD, you know, and I'll watch a video and I'll look and see, oh, that needs to be organized. And then I don't know where I am. So, and people learn in many different ways. So for me, I like to learn by reading books. And so I went out and I bought a bunch of books on wood carving. And when I got them, I was kind of surprised to see that you know, a lot of them required the use of a bandsaw. Um, I was also kind of frustrated that they would give me like one to two tutorials in the book, but then there were 15 pictures, you know? And as a beginner carver, I didn't know how to get from point A to point B. And you know, I was kind of looking for that. So um, the other thing I noticed too sometimes is they might skip some, some steps. And because I do a lot of like tutorials through work, I pay attention to those things, you know? And I'd be like, well, where's where step four? What happened to step three? So I kind of filed that away. And um, I decided that I was gonna just sort of try this on my own. So I saw an editorial cartoon and this was my first, I call him a uh, bathrobe Bernie. And I stared at the wood for a really long time because I'm spatially challenged and I don't really know how to carve, but I had so much fun. And when I was painting it, something else got ignited in me. And I knew that I wanted to just do my own creations and design them. And so that started my designing journey. And there really aren't a whole lot of books about that because I'm a book person, but thinking inside the rough out by the Character Carver Association is a great um, tool for looking at wood in a different way. So really quickly, you know, I know Joe, you talked about designing a couple of weeks ago, and I really wanna encourage the people that come to my website to design. And um, I wrote an article for the IAWC, which you can get to on their Facebook page. And if you don't uh, subscribe to their newsletter, I would suggest you do, it's a great newsletter. So ideas come from everywhere. So I thought about like, the troll dolls, those ugly troll dolls that I used it as, as a kid. And that was the inspiration for my, what I call my, my big hair troll series. This is Atticus, 
and this is his sister, Tessie. Um, you know, you can read about folklore. So I was reading about Nice, and that's what my little niece turned out to be, which kind of looks more like a Disney character. Um, I had a plaque in my kitchen forever that says, uh, I see the screw up fairy has visited visit us again. And I started thinking, well, what would a screw up fairy look like? And so that's this guy came out of that. Um, and I like to incorporate other mediums into my pieces for fun. So my little mouse has wire and little tail on the back. And then more recently, you know, my clown, I dyed uh, cotton batting for the hair um, and just, you know, have a lot of fun with doing that. So I just say that because I really encourage people to try their hand at designing their own carvings. Um, for me, that's, that's really where the joy has been and it's been great, you know, and, and, and painting has been a journey for me as well. I was terrible at it at first and now I just take my time, I'm really patient. And I know like Blake often talks about his shameless plug, so I'll do it for him. Um, some previous presentations on this channel by Sarah Baraclaw, Nikki Reese, and Rich Snyder are great for inspiration for painting. So now I'm going to quickly transition because I know you guys are here to learn about uh, building a website. So I'm gonna give me a second to share. Hopefully I do this. Cool. So pictures are worth more than words and I thought it'd be helpful to have some illustrations. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you build a website and I'm gonna use my website um, as an example. I know a lot of the folks on here, you're sellers or you wanna be sellers. You know, maybe you offer services um, maybe you want to do classes or maybe you want to do your own tutorial. So I'm going to offer some tips that I hope will help you. Um, I've written a lot of websites, but I'm not a technical person, so I don't actually build them. Um, I will tell you that when you build a website, it takes a couple of years to grow your traffic. It starts out small and it snowballs, but it's not always about big numbers. It's about building relationships. So there are like 1.93 billion websites and you wanna be seen. And that means like 547,000 websites are being launched every day. So I launched Carving Junkies a year ago and it's ranking very well and I'll tell you why. But I did look the other day, um, you know, when you do a search for a website, when things come up on Google, that first page, that's where you want to be. Think about your own searching. You know, you may go to the second page, maybe you'll go to the third page, but odds are you're not going to go much further than that. So the, the goal is to win that first page. So I looked the other day and I have 43 pages on my site. My site is a big site because um, adding content is helpful to rank. And I have 32 pages that are on the first page, six on the second page three on the third, which means I have two that I need to take a look at. So before even launching a website, and my website is a combination of information as well as tutorials. And I know that's not gonna be for everybody here, but the, the tools and things I'm talking about, I think are relevant for you guys across the board. So before you launch, the first thing you really wanna do is you wanna research the landscape and that means like going to Google and YouTube and Amazon and social media and look at what's being done in the wood carving space. You know, you want to be able to differentiate yourself. The other thing too is look for what we call in advertising the pain points. What are people complaining about? What are their problems? If your website can solve a problem or you can provide information to help somebody, that's really cool. And even if you just want to build a small website where maybe you have a couple of pages, you still need to optimize every page that you build for search. And I think that's really important. And I know I'm throwing some terms at you and, and feel free to add questions in the chat. And I know Blake will take a look at them um, and, and go through them. And hopefully I can answer them 
And of course, you can reach out to me. I have a contact us page at Carving Junkies, and I'm happy to answer questions. Are you advancing your slides? Not yet. Okay. My husband just wanted to check. I'm not advancing my slides yet. So the steps for building a site, they're pretty basic. It's you want to build high content and over deliver. Um, my tutorials have between 25 and 35 photos. And I also offer a painting guide, full color pattern. And I'll show you that stuff in a minute. You want to connect to your audience. So it's really important to have an about us and a contact page and a newsletter. Traffic building is really important. And last but not least, you want to sell your stuff or sell your services or sell your knowledge. That usually comes last after you build those relationships. So your website is all about your audience. So the first thing is to figure out like, who is your audience? Are they young? Are they old? Are they women? Are they men? Um, and you may need to be flexible over time. So who are you talking to? It helps to visualize that person. And kind of a fun exercise, I do mission statements all the time for my clients. And kind of a fun exercise is to do a mission statement for yourself. So for carving junkies, our mission is to make wood carving addictively fun for as many people as possible with free step-by-step -step tutorials that feature photos from all angles. And so that is the thing that we do that separates us. And I mentioned that my, excuse me, I'm just gonna take a drink. My husband um, is my power guy, my power carver guy, and he's been helping me with the site as well. So this is the homepage for my website. Your homepage is really important. It's the first impression. People spend a lot of time on your homepage. Um, ideally, you wanna have a logo and it doesn't have to be anything fancy in the beginning. You know, I'm used to working with a team of people. I'm very fortunate that I have creative directors and photographers. And so in doing this, I'm kind of operating on a shoestring, shoestring sorry, budget and doing it myself. So on the homepage, right away, I get to what's the problem that I'm going to help solve for people. And the problem is, you know, we remove the guesswork so you can focus on perfecting your carving. That's, um, you know, we looked at across the, the field. So for people who are first starting out, it really helps them. So a lot of people um, think, okay, well, I'm just going to start a WordPress blog and I'm gonna load that up. And I can tell you from experience, um, I've done the traditional website and I'll talk more about uh, who hosts my domain later and how that's helpful. And I've done the WordPress blog, which is, is far less uh, inexpensive, um, but it makes it really challenging. The thing that I liked about a traditional site, and you can see there's kind of like a drop down menu, it's easy to, to navigate. Um, I don't date my pages so they can stay up forever. I can change my structure easily over time. And I use a host called Solo Build It, and I'll talk a little bit more about them later. But you can see, you know, I have a start here section, and that's where I offer my free newsletter, learn, which is informational pages, make, which is tutorials, buy. I'm not really selling much right now, but down the road I might. So I just like this framework, it's easy to navigate um, and people can jump around and you want that. So I thought it might be fun just to take a quick minute and show you where the magic happens. I've seen some of you guys, like I know Dave Stetson's studio looks like the Taj Mahal to me. Doug Linker has that cozy room with his built-ins. This is my lap shop. Um, I like to carve being with my family. And so I use a vegetable bin from the container store, always have the iPod, I have my light box, a rolling tool chest. If you look closely, you'll see the Dove chocolate wrappers. I often eat chocolate when I'm doing it. Um, you know, someday it'd be fun to have a big light filled studio, but for now, this works for me. I'm sitting on the recliner. I think you can barely see me sitting there. So this is also from my homepage. I, I make it really easy for people to get to the tutorials. The nice thing about wood carving is you can feature a lot of pictures and that's really important. Um, 
you know, on your homepage and when you're putting it together, it's really less about who I am and what people will benefit from your website. And for me, I wanted it to be approachable. And, you know, things that I've heard from people are, um, you know, I've never carved, but you make it seem like I can do it, you know? And of course, I'm early in my carving journey. So, you know, it'll evolve with me over time as well. So this is a picture, um, it's taken from one of my tutorials. And I just wanted to kind of walk you through what goes into a page to give you a sense of all the behind stuff. So before I even develop a page or before anyone develops a web page, web page, you really need to search and research and find out what the keywords are. And a keyword is very simple. When you enter in the search box in Google, when you enter wood carving, that's a keyword. And so I look and I have a, a tool that I use through my host and I'm able to look at what people are searching for. And that's really important because you wanna make sure that you're developing pages that people are searching for. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they just look at demand for keywords. They say, wow, like 70,000 people are searching for this. And so I wanna do that. But again, the goal is you wanna get on that first page of Google. So if the keyword has a demand of 70,000, but if the supply, meaning other websites, is like 5,000, there's no way that you're gonna win that page. So the strategy that I use is you need to look for keyword pages that are winnable and you start slowly, you start with stuff that maybe doesn't have as much demand, but it also doesn't have supply. And then what happens is once you do that, you start to rank better, Google, Google sees that, and that's helpful because that's how you grow and, and you keep adding content. And Google says, oh, this is a site that's continuing. People are starting to go to it. So that's really important. So behind every page that is built, there's what's called the page title. And that actually appears on the top of the page. It has to be a maximum of 70 words. Um, and I'll give you an example. So. I have a page on my site, which is free wood carving patterns. And so my title is free wood carving patterns in full color that you can download. Then you have to enter a description. And if you don't enter a description, Google sometimes picks one for you and it's not always ideal. So an example of a description might be free wood carving patterns plus tutorials to make fun and fabulous wood carvings. So, Having original photos is great. And for wood carvers, that's easy to do. So every photo is content as well. And so you need to enter terms with the photos. So I know that this sounds like a lot. And one of the reasons that I use the platform that I have is because I can just put my copy in, I can name my photos, I can put in my title, my description, I press a button that says analyze it and it comes back and it'll tell me, oh, your, your keyword is too far back in your page title. Your description is too long. And so it's a lot to remember. And I find that that really helps me. The other tip that I would give you is that longer pages are better than shorter pages. So pages should definitely be a, a minimum of a thousand words. And you want to put your keywords in your headline and your subhead. So if I go back here, um, learn to carve or improve your wood carving skills, that's the headline. Down below, say goodbye to guessing, that's the, the subhead. So you want to incorporate your keywords into those things as well. That's really important. So even if you're not building an information site, which I am, it's still helpful to know these things. It's how websites get noticed. So I thought I would share this a little tip. Um, I know that there are people on here that may think about wanting to submit their patterns to magazines. And I'm terrible at drawing. We were joking that a lot of us are terrible at drawing. 
So I use an app called Flip the Comic, and it's a it's a um, Mac app, and I believe you can find a similar version for Google. And all I do is I take pictures of my final carvings from all angles. I upload them, turn them into these sketched, beautiful designs. And then I put them into Canva Pro, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And you end up with these really nice patterns. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I know people want to get their carvings out there. And so if you're looking to submit to magazines, that's a really easy way to put together a pattern. So when you're building a website, and, and this is the difference between building a website and maybe just doing a YouTube channel. When you're building a website, you have the capability to start and create an email list. And that's really important. I will tell you that when I built my first site, I didn't create an email list. And then years later, I really, really regretted it. So another example is I'm, I'm friendly with a moderator from a Facebook group and Facebook, as Facebook sometimes does, does like all social media, they decided that they were going to shut down the group. And so this person was panicking because he had like, you know, 40,000 members, but he had no way to reach his members. So an email list is a great way to build relationships with people that come to your website. Um, it also helps you promote things that you're doing. Um, it's yours and you never lose it. So in order to, to do this, when I started uh, Carving Junkies, even before I published my first page, I had my free gift for subscribing, which is really, it's just a PDF file with 50 tips, um, easy to do. And um, I have a drop down menu on my site that says free gift. And so people love free and they go there. So my newsletter is called Covered in Chips. Uh, it comes out twice a month. And if any of my subscribers are on here, I can't see you, but welcome and I'm glad you're here. And basically what I do is I provide tutorial updates. And what that does is it drives traffic to the website and Google really likes that. They see those spikes and that says to them, people are interested. So it helps your ranking. Um, I link to articles. I offer tips for subscribers that I don't offer on the website. Um, you know, I review tools that I like. Uh, I talk about upcoming events. Um, I just started doing what I call giveaways, which are really giveaways. I give away free things. And the best part about it is through the newsletter and the website, I can put up surveys and I can ask people what they're interested in. And that's really helpful when I go to create content, I know what they're interested in. So a newsletter doesn't have to be super long. If anything, I think it can be short. I'm the kind of person that I, I don't like it when I go to a website and it pops up, you know, subscribe. So I have it on the site and, you know, people can go to it and look at it. And so what I would say to you, excuse me, hmm, what I would say to you is, you know, take a look at sites that you like, look at their newsletters, um, subscribe to a couple and see what they're doing. Um, and you can get good ideas for putting stuff together. So I mentioned that, um, you know, with a website, the more visual stuff you have on it, the better it is to rank higher. So I try to do like four pages a month and I stagger them. I stagger them on my social media. And I'll talk a little bit more about social media in a little bit. Everyone learns differently. Um, my tutorial pages are very long because I have so many photos. So I always have like these little thumbnails that people can click on to get to the tutorial. I have pins that go to Pinterest because that's an important strategy. And for me, I'm using YouTube very differently. Um, I'm not narrating carving videos right now. I don't know if I ever will. I'm slow, I'm methodical, so I'm not sure that's right for me. But what I do is I create these mini slideshows with the photos that I'm already taking. And that helps give people just a quick overview of what the tutorial is. 
Um, for me, for YouTube, I see YouTube as free advertising. I, I probably should mention, I don't pay for any of my advertising. It's all organic, um, although it, it's a lot of time. So I don't know how free it is because you spend a lot of time, but um, that's how I'm working. You know, I'm, I'm on a long-term plan, so I don't mind that it's going to take a while for things to grow. Um, and so for YouTube, I want to bring people away from YouTube onto my website. If they come to my website, there's an opportunity for them to sign up for my subscriber. I can start to get to know them and build a relationship. If they stay on YouTube, um, there's no way for me to interact with them unless I put things in the comments. Um, and so I always put like a call to action in my videos, I'll show you later, to bring people to the site. So I mentioned I use a platform called Solo Build It. Um, it's a little more expensive than going with a HostGator or GoDaddy or other types of things, but they have all the tools that I need at my fingertips. They actually, it's a, it's a 10 day action guide, which could actually take 10 months. And if anything, they provide more information than I need. And so I just kind of pace myself and I do, you know, a little bit here and there at a time. I like it because they, they give me the process, they give me the articles, they have weekly webinars, they have how-to videos. Um, they give me all the software and tools. I'm not technical, so they do all the backend stuff for me. I can do my newsletter and my email through them. It's a little limited, but for me, it suits my purpose. I like to keep it simple. They have support, they have forums where people actually really want to help you. So if I have a question and I post it in the morning, by afternoon, somebody will get back to me with the answer. Um, there are other people and other uh, niche, you know, website niches that are really helpful. Um, I'm bad with numbers, they have some coaches. So when I was first starting, they helped me uh, not make a lot of mistakes that I would have made. The other thing is there's templates, I can customize it. Um, my site is a website and it also has a blog in one. I don't know why, but Google really loves blogs and all it is is just a feed so people can sign up for it. And so basically, whenever I launch a new tutorial, it goes out in the blog. And that's really helpful because literally three months after I launched, um, Feedspot found me. And so I'm ranking well for that. I'm ranking well for you know, wood carving blog too. For me, it works because there are no headaches. Um, when I had a WordPress site, I had to research everything on my own on the internet. It was very frustrating. If I had a problem, I had to reach out to somebody. So it really works for me. They, they give me a lot of analytic tools and that's really helpful. So, you know, in wrapping up this section on websites, um, what I would say to you is that a website is an opportunity to promote your carvings down the road. You know, maybe you want to add affiliate programs like Amazon, or other types of products where you can make some passive income. There's an opportunity to pay partnerships, um, but probably the most profitable thing for a website is to sell your own stuff. So that means like if you create books, you can sell them. You know, I know a lot of people like to have a book published and it's awesome. And I can tell you from experience, um, I had a book deal the company went belly up. I made like no money in the contract, you know? And so unless you're selling a million copies of a book, it's kind of hard to, to make a profit. So if you own a website, you can create digital books yourself and you're not, you know, paying the cut to the publisher. You know, maybe you want to do a DVD. Maybe you would like to put together a course, you know, maybe, you want to sell print on demand merchandise. Um, you know, maybe you want to coach other cargos. And so you can do all of that. So the website really serves as your base for all these fun things that you can do. So once you have a website, you need to promote it. So that's where I'm going to transition now into building 
your social media presence. Um, social media, I look at it as free advertising, but it can take a lot of work. I, I never understood why my advertising clients would always say, oh, I'm going to hire a team to do my social media because I wasn't on social media. And I thought, well, how hard can it be? And it's actually a lot of work. And, you know, I'm still learning as I go, but I'm going to share with you a couple things that have worked well for me. And hopefully you can, you know, take that and use it for your own social media. In advertising, we talk about your message needs to be communicated in five places to be heard. So what I would suggest is pick five platforms that you know your audience is using, spend some time reviewing them. You know, each one is gonna offer different value. Maybe it's for traffic, maybe it's for sales, maybe you're looking for visibility or credibility, but remain flexible because things may change over time. So I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about Instagram. Instagram is a giant visual search engine. It's the best platform to get noticed, especially when you have something that's visually appealing. If you're looking to sell your carvings, I suggest that you get a business account, it's free. And once you decide on what that name is gonna be, look at your other social media platforms, see if it's available and reserve them. Even if you're not gonna do anything, that way you have the same name across all your platform. When you get a business account, you'll have access to analytical tools so you can see what's working and what isn't working with your audience. And there's also opportunities for paid sponsorship. So I'm gonna show you, this was my Instagram page when I first started. Um, very haphazard, except for the name, there was no brand presence. Um, presence. I assumed that people read your write-up and I've learned that nobody does. So um, they're just kind of usually scrolling. So no one knew what I was doing. You know, I think they were looking and saying, oh, look, she does little carvings. Isn't that nice, right? And they didn't know that I was putting tutorials together. They didn't know that I had a website. So I'm in advertising. I should know better. But as I said to you, I usually just write the copy and I have a team of people that help me with stuff. So um, when I saw that it really wasn't working so well, I took a step back and thought, all right, let me, let me think about you know, what my coworkers would do. Let me put it together. I didn't want to ask them because I knew they wouldn't charge me. Let me put it together and I can run it by them. So I use an app called Canva Pro. Um, it's probably the best $13.85 I spend a month. Um, it has tools, it has templates, it has tips. What's really nice, I don't know if you can see it, but on the left-hand side, once you get the Pro, I have my brand colors there so I can look at using them. The best part about it, um, when you do social media, and I think they do this just because they want to be difficult, but every different platform, you have to size your social media post to fit in that platform. And it takes a lot of time and effort, and it's kind of frustrating. So Canva Pro has a button. I just click it, and it does it for me. I can schedule stuff. It just makes it really easy. Um, so I took a little time and I figured, well, let me just, I'm just going to add this little square in the corner and it has my website name on it and gnome carving tutorial. And so now, um, it has this function where I can pick a color in each of my carvings. So now all of a sudden I have a more cohesive look and feel. Um, it's, it's very simple for me. So for those of you, if you're selling your carvings or maybe you're offering a class or something like that, you know, just think about something to consider. Maybe you want to put, you know, somewhere where it's not super obtrusive, you know, now an Etsy, you know, DM to buy, class starting 514. And that way, when people are scrolling through, they know what to look for. So now if you compare 
the left to the right, I have a much more cohesive look. Um, you know, what I'm doing is I've also incorporated some tips and catchphrases, and I kind of monitor what does well and what doesn't. And eventually, if I decide to sell mugs or t-shirts, I can kind of gather what's working and what isn't working. You know, moving forward now, I can compare my new posts to what I have up there. Does it look good? Does it make sense? But I think the best thing that this exercise did for me was it helped me really crystallize what Carving Junkie is. You know, I kind of walked away with this idea that my carvings are fun and playful and colorful. And if I hadn't done this and thought about it and thought it through, um, I probably would not have done that. So moving forward now, Instagram is really easy for me. Um, I know what to upload, it's really helpful. So how do I know that that works and is helpful? Well, literally a week after I did this and I took pretty much very similar pictures that I already had on Instagram and I just repackaged them. And a week after that, Blake reached out to me and said, hey, it looks like you know, you're doing stuff like we're doing and your stuff is different. Would you like to speak? So I can tell you it worked, you know? Um, engagement is up, traffic is up, I'm getting more subscribers. People now know what it is I do. And I will share with you that um, Instagram is not a huge driver of traffic for me, but it's visibility. It's where people in the carving community get to know me. The other thing about social media, and I won't talk too much about it, but you can research it. There, are, Believe it or not, there are days of the week and times that are better to post. And so, for example, I know Monday morning is good. Friday at 7 p.m. is good. And these are Eastern times. Sunday at 10 a.m. I can tell you that Tuesday is deadly. Nobody's on there. So with Instagram, the thing I would say to you is try to add content regularly. I try to add at least one post a week. Um, always respond to comments. And if you want to get to know somebody, ask them a question about their wood carving. Um, people tend to be more apt to respond if you do that. Outdoor pictures with natural lighting works better. Sometimes you can blur the, the background. Um, I try to vary it up. I have some stark white uh, backgrounds as well, but it would be kind of boring to do that all the time. So you look at it from a visual perspective. It's a very visual medium. Um, on Instagram, I've just started doing reels, which are short videos. I will admit I was really intimidated at first doing reels. They're actually a lot of fun. Um, Instagram gives you the tools and you, it, it takes a little time to figure it out, but once you do, it's pretty easy. So what I would say to you, the reason to do it is because you can reach thousands of people, thousands more, and if it goes viral, then like you're reaching hundreds of thousands of people. So, you know, look at reels that are outside the wood carving space, see what people have done. You can get ideas for how to do your reel. Um, and they are kind of fun. I do kind of like a little reveal. And I will share with you that I invested $15 on Amazon in that little electronic uh, turntable so you can see the front and back of the wood carving. And that seems to be working very well. Stories are another quick hit. They only stay up, I think it's for 24 hours. And so all week long, you've seen that Blake has been posting um, stories about me appearing here today. Supposedly they drive traffic up as well. I don't use them as much, um, you know, there's always so much to do, you can only do so much. So now, um, Moving on a little bit, Pinterest is also a huge visual search engine. There's like 454 million people that use it. Um, I read recently that 85% of pinners go there to start a project. Um, I was doing phenomenal on Pinterest for a while. They have changed their, their algorithm and that happens a lot. That's you know Google and Pinterest and Instagram and YouTube. YouTube, you'll do well, and then all of a sudden they'll change how they look at things. And so you really, you have to be flexible 
and you have to sort of take some time. So I can tell you from my research, and I'm still working on this to get it back, you know, the traffic back. They like what are called fresh pins. So that's like a new imagery that you use. They're looking for quality imagery. You enter a title and description, they want them to be catchy. They're looking for shorter keywords, you know, one to three uh, keywords. Um, I also post on TikTok. And the reason I do it, it's, it's easy for me. I take videos that I've already created for my site and I just post them. Um, and then the uh, Wood Carving Illustrated Forum. I actually started on there even before I launched uh, my site. I've gotten to know people. It's a great group of people. Um, and what's nice is I'm able to uh, put my website name, my Instagram channel, my Facebook links all on my signature. And even though it's not a huge uh, interactive forum, there are what I like to call a lot of lurkers, a lot of people that go there. So all of these different social media mediums, they can all be traffic drivers, you know? So Facebook, I, I say that my people are on Facebook. Um, I looked the other day and 25% of my traffic is coming to Facebook. And I've actually been spending the last, you know, couple of months uh, focused on Instagram. So now I'm looking at Facebook again. It's really hard to do all of this all at once. So don't feel overwhelmed, you know, pick your five and experiment and then do them one at a time and see what works and what doesn't. So for Facebook and Pinterest, by the way, definitely reserve a business account. And I mentioned it's really important. Make sure you can use your name across all your social media. It just makes it easier. And I told you that it takes five mentions for people to remember you. So I also reserved a Facebook group. I am doing nothing with it. I'm just holding on to it, but I know eventually I might. So it's good to reserve all that stuff. I know some carvers host live demos. I usually post new tutorials. Um, I posted the appearance today. So I think that's, that's really helpful. On Facebook, I would encourage you to join a bunch of wood carving groups. And I think in the show notes, they'll upload some of the groups that I'm part of and you can take a look. First thing is you wanna read the rules about self-promotion. You wanna be careful that you're not being too overly promotional. Um, on some, sometimes I'll ask the moderator, is it okay if I post a progression video? And they seem to be pretty receptive to uh, progression videos. My tutorials are free right now, so I think that helps. Um, like other social media, it's really important to try to add contact regularly. Maybe it's one post a week, but just keep doing that. Um, you know, I'll share with you, for example, when I started, I thought the audience for my website was going to be primarily guys. And I joined a woman's wood carving uh, group and I'm on there. And now all of a sudden I see that 40% of the people that come are women. The other thing that's really helpful is you guys have a ton of knowledge and information. So when you're in a Facebook group, look for people that are asking questions or need help and respond to those people, you know, and that's a really good way for people to get to know you. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of help somebody, you know, help yourself and help somebody else and pay it forward. So YouTube, I mentioned I'm using it differently. Um, YouTube is the second most visited website in the world. It's the second largest search engine. So just like on all the um, social media that I talked to you about in YouTube, you wanna research the keywords that people are looking for and try to, uh, when you put a description or a title, try to incorporate those keywords into your titles. There are 500 videos that are loaded every minute on YouTube. So, you know, it's hard to get noticed. Um, probably 
the master on YouTube would be Doug Linker. And I know uh, that he did a presentation on here. Uh, and, and I would encourage you to go watch that. As I said, I'm, I'm using YouTube to try to get people off YouTube and visit my website. So my channel is not that popular, but I will tell you that Gene Messer found me very early and he's been such a great support, you know, and he included me in one of his video on YouTube people, you know? And so even though I don't have a ton of subscribers, that is helping me to get noticed because people see Gene, um, you know, I'm really grateful to him for that. And he does that with a lot of carvers. He's, he's awesome that way. So when you're putting your channel together, the thing to think about, you know, we talk about in advertising, what's in it for them? What's in it for your audience? What is your channel going to provide for them? And I think that helps you to put together your description. I would suggest that you use, if you have music, use the YouTube audio library. Um, sometimes they're a little funny about music and they may remove your music. And then you have like a silent video, which is not the most appealing. Um, like building a, a website and YouTube and even Instagram, it's what is known as this snowball effect. So when you first start, it starts out really small and I know that that can be really discouraging for people. I know sometimes it's discouraging for me. I'll be like, oh, you know, I've been doing this for a year now, you know, and, but what happens is little by little, it adds up. And then eventually it becomes this, it goes down the hill and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that is sort of the, the, um, the visual part. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned about, you know, call to action. So um, I want to, you know, thank IAWC for having me on today. I hope you got something out of it. I know it was a lot of stuff thrown at you. You know, feel free to contact me at carvingjunkies.com if you have any questions. Um, I'm always happy to work with other carvers. If you think about doing a tutorial and you've never done one, you know, I'm happy to work with you and maybe, you know, we can load it on the site. Um, I've done that with an Instagram person. It was great. So, you know, definitely my call to action. Of course, you have to say this, subscribe to my website newsletter, follow me on Instagram, you know, like me on Facebook, subscribe. And that's, that's enough yakking out of me, but um, I guess we'll open it up to questions. Uh, Blake, I don't know if you have any in the chat. Yeah, one question, Dana. Um, give me tips for folks who uh, don't feel confident in writing and uh, what they would do about uh, developing like a website. I do. I think, you know, for this type of website, um, it's one of the reasons I love doing it because medical writing is so static and, and stayed is um, try to make it as conversational as possible. Uh, read it out loud to hear what it sounds. When you write it, write it, let it sit for a couple of days, pick it back up, look at it again, see what you can cut, see what makes sense, rework it, put it down for a couple of days, pick it back up and do that. I mean, it took me probably a month just to write my homepage because I wanted to get it right. And that's really important. Um, so I think that's a really good tip. You know. The other thing too, when you do like an about us page, make it conversational. That's where you share a little bit about yourself. Try to let people know who you are and stuff like that. And it's a great opportunity and people do go there. So make that one. I, I like to make it fun. You know, I'm, I'm doing this for fun. You know, this is going to be my retirement gig, you know, and I want to have fun doing it. So that's what I would suggest. Another question, uh, how long do you think it takes to create a website? So if somebody is wanting to create one, especially through the host that you use, how long does that take? Um, it's, it takes probably uh, a couple of months, I think, because, and here's why. You wanna spend time researching first. You wanna look at what's out there. Um, you want to be able to differentiate yourself. So I spent a lot of time looking at other websites that were out there um, and then, um, you get all these tools, you have all these keyword uh, 
pages. And it takes time to organize. How do I want the website to be? Um, there's this thing we call it stickiness in websites. When somebody comes to your website, you want them to jump around. You don't want them to just like visit and leave. So for example, um, my free wood carving patterns page is a, is a big keyword. Now I'm at a point where um, I can I can go for, for keywords that have more supply because I've been out there for a year. And so what I do is I have pictures of my patterns, but then I have links to my tutorials. And so it takes a little bit of time to sort of figure out how you're gonna set up your page, you know, your website. Um, the pages themselves probably take me a couple of days. I do them in stages. Um, I take pictures and do the tutorial as I go because then I'll forget later what I did. Um, and then I let it sit, you know, I go back, I optimize the photos and things like that. So it's, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but the beauty is, especially for a wood carving website is the content is what we call evergreen. Once you put it up, it's done, it's up forever. You know, one of the reasons I let my medical website go was I was constantly having to update the information to make it relevant, you know? And um, I just didn't wanna be doing that in retirement. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's up there, it's up there forever. And the longer that it's up there, hopefully the more the traffic will grow and grow, the more people, I mean, I, I see it, you know, I see where I started and where I'm at now. And it's amazing how it grows and it's, it's slow. It's not a uh, build it and get no, you know, noticed instantly type thing. It takes time. Thanks for that. Um, another question. Uh, do you ever see yourself getting a book of tutorials published? Um, is that something you have in your future? Yeah, I think I alluded to this a little bit. You know, it, it might be something that I want to do down the road. My eyes were open to that. There's somebody, um, through the domain hosting that I use and she has a recipe site and she does books and she does them herself and she does them as PDF files. So it really kind of opened my eyes to that. So yes, it may be something down the road. I mean, one of the things I did was, you know, I reached out to my subscribers and said, you know, I'm, I'm gonna work on that. What would you like to see? And that's perfect because you wanna meet the demands of your audience. Um, so I think so, yes, I mean, it just seems like, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I retire, I want to put my feet up. And the nice thing about websites is you can develop passive income tools. Once you develop that book, you host it, you know, and I'm not there yet, but I know somebody will help me to figure that out, you know, through Solo Build It. You can load it. And so I could be sunbathing in the backyard and people can be buying the book. So for me, um, you know, and I'm not looking to make a ton of money, you know, in retirement, you're on a fixed income. If I can go out to dinner a couple of times with my husband, you know, that's good for me, you know, but that, that is something that I'm definitely looking at. I'm still in the content traffic building phase, which is probably the least fun part because it's a lot of work, but eventually it'll pay off. So one other, one other question, would you ever consider coaching other carvers to help them develop their websites? Is that something you have in mind? You know, it's funny because Blake, you asked that question uh, when you and I first talked. I never say never. So yeah, I mean, maybe down the road, um, if I can be of service to someone and help them. I know when I started this website, um, my first website, I didn't get help and I made a lot of mistakes. It was a great learning experience for me though. And it was successful and it helped people. So it was worth it for me. But this go around, I actually worked uh, with a coach through Solo Build It. And it wasn't that expensive. And I'm really glad that I did because I would have made a ton of mistakes. My site would just be sitting out there collecting dust. So for me, I followed you know, direction. I have ADD, so my husband knows this. Like I, if I have to read something, it's all over because in my career, I'm constantly skimming. So it was very helpful to have somebody decipher all of this technical stuff and how, you know, the page description and title, somebody walked me through it. And I think that's helpful. So that's a, a long-winded answer to your question that says, you know, if there's a demand out there, maybe I'd be open to it. Um, so yes. 
So we'll open it up to the group. Is there any other questions from the audience as far as um, the stuff that Dana's covered today? Okay. Well, Dana, we appreciate it. Um, again, I want to thank you for coming on. I, I want to touch on a couple of things that you mentioned. You know, one of our big things uh, through the International Association of Woodcarvers is to share wood carving and grow community, uh, get that information out there. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, through social media, you figured out a way that you can make other people feel like they can do it, like they can carve. Uh, and it's not just a matter of looking at something and say, well, I, I can never do that. So uh, that's one of the things I challenge this group is, you know, try to get other people involved and show them the things that you're doing uh, to try to help grow this community and, and put an eye from their hand and make them feel like that they can do it. Uh, I think that's what we all strive to do is to try to, you know, grow the community, bring new carvers into, uh, into the craft and try to, you know, try to keep it going. So uh, I appreciate you saying that. And uh, all of this information is valuable information. Anybody that's on social media should be able to gain some information from the stuff that you shared today. Uh, I look forward to getting out and digging into your website a little more and checking out what you have to offer. And I may be reaching out to you for some of that coaching as far as building websites and stuff too, because I know that's something I need to do. So I appreciate that. Uh, again, if you all want to check it out, check out Carbon Junkies. Go to her website. Uh, reach out to Dana if you have any questions. I'm sure she'll be happy to help you. Um, like and subscribe her pages. Make sure you go out and join in all of those. And check out her newsletter. Um, her newsletter is very valuable. It's got a lot of information. Uh, she's written articles for us. And so I look forward to having that relationship with her going forward. And hopefully she can, uh, she can help us with our newsletter as well. Again, if you want to sign up for our newsletter, the uh, link tree is in the chat there. Go out and click on it. Uh, there's a link there to go in and sign up for the newsletter. We're going to try to do that once a month at the beginning of the month. Uh, we've shared uh, several of those so far. So uh, that's something that we plan on continuing to do. Uh, and I'll take some of the tips that Dana shared today and make sure we apply those to our newsletter going forward. Uh, some of the things that's coming up, just want to remind you all, after next week, again, Dylan Goodson's going to be on next Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, he's going to be doing relief carving demonstrations. After next week, we're going to drop back to a once a month meeting uh, through the summer. Everybody knows that people have other things to do during the summer months when it gets warm. Uh, a lot of people plan to go out and do things. And uh, so we want to um, take notice of that. And we'll drop back through the summer months, to just a once a month uh, situation where we're also going to be doing some other things. So we're going to we're going to work in some podcasts. Uh, we're going to have some some meetings that we'll put out on uh, YouTube so people can see that. Uh, but again, these kind of meetings, we're going to drop back to once a month in June. That'll be June 18th, July 23rd, and August the 20th. And then starting in September, we'll go back to a weekly format there. So just make note of that, and I'll be talking about that again later on um, in, in future meetings. So just be aware. Um, and make sure if, if you want to, um, to donate to our group, uh, you can go out and click on the link tree there and buy us a coffee. Again, we continue to have to pay for the Zoom subscription, whether we're having a weekly meeting or a monthly meeting. Uh, and the funds that you all donate go towards uh, paying that subscription. So I just want to remind you about that. Uh, Dana, thanks for coming to us today. Thanks for all the information you shared. Uh, look forward to going out and checking out your information. Thank you all for joining us today on the International Association of Woodcarvers. And we'll see you all next Saturday, 3 p.m., where carvers are helping carvers. Thank you all. <laughs>